Are you looking for an escape from manufactured truth wrapped in selfish agenda? Don't you just want to have a real and raw conversation, all masks and rules aside? That's what you're getting here at Titan Evolution Podcast. Get rid of all the nonsense information and discuss everything under the sun without filters. Listen to real stories of real people who will put your current perspectives to the test, guide you on living the life you truly want, and see everything free from judgment and pretenses. Time to get rid of those unhealthy environments and let your authentic self shine. Here are your hosts, Travis Johnson and Carol Carpenter. Well, welcome to the show. I'm Carol Carpenter, and I am joined here with my co-host, the fabulous Travis Johnson. <laughs> and here we have today as a special guest, Juanita Sepulveda. Hi, Juanita. Hello. So Juanita is a first-generation U.S. Marine Corps veteran, entrepreneur, and a mother of seven children. Holy crap. Uh, she is the founder of JFS International, working with small businesses to establish and support their growth, as well as the COO and partner at Vaniel, is that correct, Vaniel Investments, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is patenting uh, the process and training stock options trading as they teach mm -hmm. how to trade on the stock market. So very interesting. Uh, Juanita believes in a lifelong learning process uh, with a master of science in education from Texas A&M and various other programs. Uh, you utilize your education as a resource in the areas of education, military and veteran advocacy, community outreach, excuse me, and business development. So that's a freaking mouthful, Juanita. It is. It is. <laughs> but it's true. It's true. Those are my areas of interest. Areas of interest. Interest, interest yeah. is usually one thing, not not all those things. Well, you know, I believe in challenging myself. So you know you had to pick a few. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well. We're going to ask you the question we always ask. Travis, would you like to ask it? Oh, I would love to. And thank you for that lead in here. <laughs> really appreciate it. Juanita, <laughs> what makes you a Titan? You know, I, I had to ask someone that because, you know, when I looked at it, I thought it was this, you know, three-armed creature that's going to come in and attack, right? So I had to ask someone, you know, what about the titans has anybody ever referred to you as a titan and he started laughing at me he says not me he says they must be talking about you and i thought well uh, you know i've heard it a few times but you know i think we talked about this before that you know titans are neither good nor bad they just are and for me you know when i walk into something i want to give it my all i want to accomplish something i see a mission and a vision and i go for it you know, it's uh, no holds bar. It's going to get accomplished. And they tell me it's like brute force. I go in, I knock everyone down, and I'm thinking, I'm not knocking anyone out. And if I do, I pick them up and say, thank you. But I, you know, I spoke to my son, and he says, Mom, he says, yeah, I can see you. And I said, really? He says, let's be honest. He says, you're a little scary. You're my mom. He says, but you're scary and intimidating. And I'm thinking, I don't think a Titan's intimidating. I think they're just really strong. They know what they're going after. They're, they know to accomplish it. And he says, no, mom, when you come in, we can feel when you come in because you come in with all this swag. He says, and, and you know your stuff and you don't stand by, you know, letting people correct. And when you, you're the subject matter expert, you stand firm on that. He says, but the other thing too, he says, mom, you never forget to reach back and pull someone back forward with you. He says, to me, that's a Titan. And I think that's really how I view myself as a Titan. I, I push forward, I get the mission accomplished, I see something that needs to be fixed or something that needs to be achieved, but I don't forget to reach back and bring someone along with me because I have an expiration and the reality knowledge should be passed on and improved. Yeah, yeah. that's a, the only way to better society. Way. We get yeah. to interview Reggie Walker and we told him that we had you coming on next. He's like, oh, Juanita? Oh, let me tell you some stuff about Juanita. She's the most oh, resilient Lord. motherfucker I ever melt in my life. 
He's the definition of no excuses. So you've got the endorsement from Reggie Walker for being the oh, badass so that you are. We and, and he also said, you're a fucking hitter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to give him a call. But the first time we spoke, I'm going to say, first of all, thank you, Reggie. That's a great compliment coming from you. Um, but the first time I spoke to him, we spoke like four, five hours, something like that. Yeah. And just hit it off. Great conversations. Really excited about the things that he's doing. And it's just nice to have a soundboard. And, you know, it's one of those feelings where you run a parallel line with someone, but you never met them yet. And then all of a sudden you have this encounter and it's like major energy and you're like super excited oh yeah he's amazing same thing about him i think well he says the same thing about you and and he mentioned something that freaking blew my mind and he mentioned it after he said all these things like tell juanita this right so travis and i are writing this shit down because we wanted to make sure to to say it to you on air yeah yeah we were taking notes as he was talking and uh he uh he said you were homeless several times. And uh, the fact that yeah. you got out of it and became the person that you are is, is the reason why he really connects with you and loves you so much. Yeah. Yeah, we were homeless in uh, 2011. As a matter of fact, we got the call right after Christmas, December the 25th. Um, I didn't tell my kids until later. But yeah, we got a call and the gentleman was really really nice. I think he was a veteran. He was telling me, he says, you know, he was giving the, that, that disclaimer and everything. And he pauses it and he says, get out. Don't give them any money. They're not going to help you sell what you can and get out. He says, and how much can you, you know, pay for today? And, I said, and at that time, you know, I said, thank you. I'll call back. And how often do people really take those kind of words of advice and do something with it? I did exactly what he said. I sold everything I could. I paid off all my utilities. I got everything in order. And it was after 2008 with the crash of the stock market, right? We had really taken a downfall. <clears throat> we held on to 2011 and we lost our house. It got foreclosed. And at that time, there was six of us at the house. And I have a photo of our last, of our last photo on the stairs of the six of us and our dog. And, um, you know, I always had meetings with the kids and I sat them down at the table and I said, okay, guys, I said, real talk, you know, we're, we can fight to keep the house or we can let it go because it's just an inanimate object, right? But they, we had been in that house for over five years. I had it built custom made. It was four bedrooms. You know, the kids all had their baths. They had this big backyard and everything, but you can predict those moments in life that you're going to get thrown this curveball that you're not going to be prepared for. And the kids all looked at me and he says, mom, we trust you. We'll do whatever we have to. So we sold everything. We let them take the house. We put the most valuable things to, that we felt were important into storage. And we were homeless for six months. We had a GMC uh, safari van that it was working okay. And then all of a sudden the AC went out and then the thermostat went out and it was like, okay, just keep throwing it at us. Keep throwing it it's at like us. It's like the universe has survive. this like, right. Horrible sense of humor of like, Hey, you know what? You're having a tough time. You're down and you know, literally down for the count. And let me, let, let me just keep like beating on you, kick you in the gut, yeah. see how much more you can take. It's like, it's, such a morbid way of looking at it, but in a way it makes you stronger. Cause if you hadn't experienced it and you wouldn't know how strong and resilient you really are. Well, I think the first fork in the road, you know, that Robert, Robert Frost um, poem, you know, the, the fork in the road, right? The road less traveled. The first time that we actually experienced it was in 2000 and, um, too, when we started having the issues with our with their dad, right? And it finally just hit us. 2005, we, we couldn't take anymore. It was an abusive relationship and we left in 2006. Um, I had swallowed my pride and went to ask him for help. And his statements was, I paid child support 
figure it out. Oh, ouch. Figure it out. How many uh, and, kids did you have at that time? At that time, we had five and I had gotten out of the Marine Corps. I got out of the Marine Corps and uh, I didn't want to get out. Uh, I knew I wanted to retire. But the reality is I was a better student. I was a better, you know, I, I excelled in everything. I was a logistics chief for a 53 squadron nest and e board. And so if that should tell you anything, Travis knows what that means. I know what you that know, means, I, but I don't know our listeners that they even know what a 53 is. Uh, a CH-53 is a helicopter that they were using. I was at a training unit for pilots for the CH-53s in the Marine Corps. And across the hangar, hangar were the B-22s, which is the Osprey. So the unit that I was in, they did training with officers. Of course, you also had flight line, which is the mechanics and things of that nature. So I would be able to go down and, and either, you know, do the flight line, learn about uh, the helicopters, or I'd be up top learning with uh, with the officers and I would quiz and we'd talk and I'd quiz them and we'd go over things. But I did everything from training to ceremonies. We did a hop from, my last hurrah was to Key West. And so basically what I did, I did a lot of coordination, scheduling. I would, we would move a whole unit, you know, in, in, in as a whole for training. Helicopter security, safety equipment, fuel and everything, right? including, you know, food and things. So that was my last true route, but I was an E4, which meant I was a corporal. And normally that billet goes to a staff sergeant or a gunny. So it was a much higher ranking position, but I was really good at what I did. Mm -hmm. so that was it. You know, but you, I mean, you said something in there when you were talking about your story and Carol brought up, it just keeps happening. What I've noticed is when like the walls are crumbling down, they're going to keep crumbling until you yeah. stand up and say, that's in it. That's it. I've had enough. No more. And you have that fortitude to say, I'm done with all your shit universe. <laughs> right. Is that how you felt? You know, I'm going to tell you the one thing that I did, you know, hold on to is that I knew that my walk was not alone. Right. And what I mean by that is, you know, when we say we walk by faith, right, not by sight. Um, I'm not going to tell you there was days that I literally drove three to five miles out into the it, out into the woods and screamed my head off because that was my only coping mechanism. And I didn't want my kids to see me cry. I didn't want them to see me to lose it. You know, I was their foundation. And at that time, there weren't any programs that supported women veterans as they transitioned out of the military. You know, and so once I finally said, fuck the shit, I'm not putting up with it anymore. I got my kids. I'm not going to deal with this. You know, I'm a, I was a really good student. I'm just going to go back to school. So called a realtor, sold the house, sold one of the vehicles, shut everything down, sold my house in 24 hours for exactly what I asked for. Oh, wow. On, seriously, talk about lining everything up the way it was supposed to. Uh, when I said enough is enough, I'm done with this shit. I put it on the market, 24 hours it's sold. We got everything in order, packed up our vehicle. And within 48 hours, we were on the road. And wow. everything just lined up like it, like it was supposed to. Um, or at least the way my mom wanted it supposed to, right? But the reality was every decision I had a conversation with God and, you know, you read things and you experience things and then you merge them. People give you advice, advices like Swiss cheese has got holes in it. Right. Mm -hmm. And you kind of fill it in with whatever it is that really fits. You don't throw everything away because it's going to apply to you at one point or another, good or bad. So basically it was like, well, fuck this shit. I'm a Marine. I'm not failing. Failing is just not an option. I got kids watching me. You know, I know my home record. I know going back to Texas. I'm just going to go back to Texas and, and figure it out there. And that's what we did. We went all the way back to Texas. And it was just, I didn't look back. I, that wasn't the direction I was going, you know? Mm -hmm. So you said you were homeless for like six months. How did you take that? What, what caused that six month 
delay before, you know, the next thing happened? Was this time to um, kind of reassess? Was this time to, you know, build a plan? And what, what was going through your mind during those six months to kind of the next chapter? Okay, so really, honestly, we were just hoping that social services didn't find out and take my kids. That oh. was, that was the fear that we lived under. That was the umbrella that, you know, we were constantly hiding under is that, you know, we were homeless. We didn't have a home. We didn't have an address. And of course, the ex-husband had all these colorful words for me because I wasn't failing. He was upset that I'd gotten custody. And the last thing he told me to my face is, go ahead and take them. I'm going to get them back anyway. It's not like you can survive without me. So oh, that was a little Juanita, bit of a motivator. Juanita, when I got um, divorced from my, um, now, obviously now ex-husband, I remember going to probably, I think this was like the 10th, 11th or 12th uh, marriage counselor, right? And yeah. when you try that hard, and I mean, you're trying because you want to make the marriage work, right? But in the counseling session, he actually said, and this was the day that I made up my mind, the counselor said, um, hey, to my ex-husband, you do know what you're losing, right? Like you're, you're losing a wife, you're losing the home as, it, as, you, as you built it, right? The kids are going to end up living in separate homes, you know, like a week on, week off kind of thing. I mean, do you understand what you're losing in this process, right? Right. And he said, well, I, I don't know why you think I'm worried. She can't do anything without me. <laughs> and I just remember sitting there because I, I was in complete disbelief that the person that I loved all these years basically dismissed me like I was nothing, that, that he honestly believed that to say it out loud. And right. I, I literally picked up my things took my coffee and I walked out of there and I never looked back. I filed for the divorce. Yeah. And that, that was is heartbreaking when somebody says that to you. It's very painful. It feels like, it feels like you wasted all that time. Right. And, and we, and a lot of people say that and it, to, to an extent it was, but I always believe it's neither good nor bad. Right. And I've, I've it's taken a long time to get to that point. The other thing too is I forgave him and I actually called him and, and I called him and said, Hey, I love you. And I forgive you. And it made it worse. You would have thought <laughs> it been, and I was going, are you serious? I would have thought this would have been a good thing. You know, I mean, I'm not mad at you. You know, it's okay. It's okay that you were an asshole to me. I, I you know, I accept that, but, you know, and I told him, I said, you know, things will not go well for you until you do right by me and dicho hecho meaning you know I said it now it's happening you know it continues because you have to want to grow you have to first of all forgive yourself because yeah. I realized you know I, it wasn't his fault it was my fault it was and what I mean by that I'm not saying it was my fault that we got divorced I'm saying I have I take 100% responsibility for my actions you know, I can't control him. I can't get him to respect me or anything of that nature. But I take 100% responsibility for my behavior, right? And in order for me to grow, it took a long time for me to be able to say, I forgive you. And even yeah. more to say, I forgive myself. Right. So. Right. And, and I think, you know, anytime there is an issue in a relationship and when re relationships end, <laughs> it's not dependent on one person. I mean, you both right. contributed to the situation that you're in. So if you can each own your portion of it and move yeah. forward, that's, that's the most important thing because you, you can't grow if you don't accept right. those things about yourself and just go, all I can do is learn from this and become a better person. And I, if I can accept yeah. this, you know, I have something to work with because if you always think that you're right, then what do you have to work on? Well, Travis, thank goodness this is on recording because I'm going to say it. You know, I even told him, I said, I know I'm not always right. And he would look at me like, did those words come out of your mouth? And I'm going, <laughs> yes, those words came out of my mouth. But going back to, you know, the six months of being homeless, you know, we floated for a little bit 
And we had a friend, an, an army friend that let us stay there with him. But, you know, he was very kind and he did help us. But there were six kids and a dog, right? Yeah, that's a lot. That, it's a lot. So talk you about- You had me until the dog. Out the dog, I know. perfectly okay. Add the dog, it's too <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and again, you know, not everyone's a dog lover and not everyone wants all these kids, right? And the reality is, you know, he needed his place back. So God intervened again. And remember our fear with the social worker? Yeah. So my seven-year-old, Ethan, which is he's now one of these dashing, handsome young men, um, mm-hmm. he was seven. And our friend, who's the social worker at the school, walks up to him and says, Ethan, sweetheart, how are you today? And he goes, please, please don't make me move schools. Please don't make me leave. And he starts crying, 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 crying. And so she goes, Ethan, it's okay. I'm not going to make you leave. Go on back to, to class. So she Trots over, calls me, and she goes, Juanita. I said, yes, Lori. She says, how are you doing? I said, I'm good. She says, if I ask you a question, will you be honest? I said, absolutely. Depends on she the says, question. are you homeless? She goes, are you homeless? I said, yes. She says, why didn't you ask for help? I said, I'm a Marine, and Marines don't fail. She goes, okay, so if I ask you, will you let me help you? What are you going to say? Absolutely you may help me. And so she made some calls that same day, got an appointment with Sam's ministry, which was a set aside program. There wasn't one. Okay. There was no appointments. They made one for eight 30 in the morning. Oh, wow. And uh, yes. And so I had this, I have this huge binder that I put on the La Familia birth certificate, shot records, everything you know, uh, bank statements, you know, birth certificates, social security cards, you mean everything you could possibly need, you know, loans, bank deposits, whatever it is, right? Even my firstborns, you know, hair, you know, just kidding. But um, (laughs) and I showed up with it and I'm pushing Ruthie and Maggie, which are my two youngest, right? In a double stroller and I'm walking in and getting them in order and I sit there and in one sitting, I fill out everything. And the case manager goes, well, that's never happened. I said, what's never happened? He says, I've never qualified anybody on the first sitting. I said, oh, that's because I'm Marine Corps. I said, see, here it is. And so qualified for it, I got a voucher and we were really happy. And a voucher is basically telling the person that I qualify for rental, right? And they were even going to pay the deposit. But the real obstacle starts where finding a house that's able to house all these kids and me, right? This is where the issue begins because a lot of these programs eliminate us, right? They eliminate us because either the sex of the kids or the amount of kids or they only serve women or they only serve, you know, women with one or two children or women that have girls or whatever the case may be, right? So I went on this search and fortunately I was really aggressive and within a week we found a house. So we went and looked at it. <sighs> the grass was like yay tall. I thought I was gonna lose one of my kids in there, right? <laughs> when you walked into the house, the stench was so nauseating that it probably burned all of my nasal hair and my eyelashes as you walked in, you know, because just the smell alone. I looked oh. in the in the oven and there was this much roaches, layers of roaches in the oh. oven. Did you not? There was holes in the walls. There was a footprint on the front door. The electricity wasn't working. So they had pulled all the wiring. So the kids all and I, we all walk in. I'm holding one. Um, Olivia's holding Maggie. No, Hannah's holding Maggie. I'm holding Ruthie. And, and I'm looking at everybody and everybody's kind of walking through, not touching anything. But it had uh, five bedrooms. It had five bedrooms, which was it met the requirements because I could put two of the little ones together and two of the girls together and, you know, so-and-so. And it was plenty of room to meet the state requirements. 
And so we all kind of looked at each other and we looked at the gentleman and says, we'll take it. As nasty as it was, it was the only thing that met the requirements. Oh, and man. the guy says, uh, well, it won't be ready for 30 days. And we all looked at each other and said, well, we'll come and help you. We'll cut the yard. We'll do whatever. I said, but we've got to be in here in 30 days, less than 30 days. He said, it's impossible. I said, no, sir. I said, I'm a Marine and I'm, I'm on set aside. He said, whoa, whoa. He says, I don't do those programs. And I'm going, shit. Yeah, I said, well, okay. sir, I'm going to tell you. I said, I just need you to be kind. I said, I'm asking you to please be kind. I need a little bit of, of your kindness. He said, well, can you prove you have an income? Can you prove you are a Marine? Can you prove that you have a bank account? I said, sir, you want a year's worth of statements? You want a year's worth of LESs? You want my tax returns? I said, I give you my firstborn, but she's in North Carolina. So that's out of the question. And the guy kind of looks at me like, well, seriously? <laughs> right. And so I literally had to sell my family for him to take. The last thing I told him is, sir, like I stated, I'm a Marine. And if you'll please be kind, I guarantee you, you will never have an issue out of me. I said, you'll rarely have to come to the house. You'll rarely have any problems with my kids. I said, and if it is, it's only because either the toilet is sopped up or there's a leak in the roof or we have to replace something. I said, but nine out of 10 times, I'll end up doing it myself. And I said, I just need you to be kind. And he looked, he says, can you send it to me right now? I said, because I had it on my phone. I said, I can send it to you, but what's the email? And so I started sending him stuff and he says, you're not joking. I said, no, sir. I said, I need this house and I need it less than 30 days. And so he agreed to it. We would drive by every couple of days to see at the house. They literally had to get this long trailer because they were scraping everything out with shovels. It was that bad. Oh, oh. horrible. Mm -hmm. But that's all we could find in the district so the kids could go to school that they wanted to go to. Oh, jeez. Because there's a program here called the McKinney Vento Act that supports that because stability in schools is probably the only thing the kids will have when you're in that situation. So, yeah. you know, when they asked me about housing, I said, I wasn't looking at the house. I was looking at the home. Mm -hmm. They said, well, what's the difference? I said, there's a difference. I said, a house is an inanimate object, but a home is where, you know, our heart is. And I needed a home. I needed my kids to know that there was going to be stability, that there was going to be support, and that everything was going to be okay. And we could have a starting point again to start rebuilding. Yeah, wow. So, that's so very powerful. I wanted to, uh, not to discount all the stuff that you said, because it's just a powerful story. You mentioned there you didn't ask for help because you're a Marine and the Marines don't fail. The failure is not asking. I can't right. tell you how many times in my life, how many situations I've been yeah. in that asking the question is the way out, saying, I'm right. not saying I need help, saying, you're like, well, I should be able to do it on your own. It's not about should. Should's a cuss word. We cuss on this show all the time. Should is a bigger cuss word, in my opinion, than should, hell, damn, fuck, all that stuff. Because should yeah. is what keeps people from doing what they need to do. Yeah. You need it from ask for help from day one. And yeah. I'm not, it's I not did. about blame. It's not about none of that stuff, right? It's not yeah. about that at all because I've been the kid in the situation. Right. Yeah. And when you described your but homelessness, I, think, I realized I've been homeless pride? too. Yeah. It's pride. But it is isn't pride. it pride? Because it's, it's, you don't want people to think that you can't do it. And so you always right. step into, I'm going to do it. I'm mm -hmm. going to do it no matter what. And, and, and the truth is sometimes you just do need that help because you can't walk that yeah. walk. Alone. Well, you know, as when I got out, remember I told you there wasn't any programs for women to transition. So I, I ended up going to the civilian side, which is the education, because that was the mm -hmm. only thing I had to, to hold on to. So my partner in life became my education. That, was, that became my partner. And I would read and, and people would ask mission statements, write, a, write you know, something that, would, that could pinpoint some of the things that you're doing. And one of the things I remember is the worst words to live by is coulda, woulda, shoulda, if only, mm. right? Coulda, woulda, shoulda, if only. And so when I started going back to school, because I realized that I had to go back to school, 
I'd gotten a job, you know, got a job, got everything in order, you know, life happens, you know, businesses shut down, you know, careers changes, whatever. But I realized that I had to go back to the school. And instead of having a, a pity party, um, I ended up going back and getting a master's. So at that time, their dad came back and I found out just, I guess, about four years ago. He came back, moved to San Antonio under the pretense that he wanted to be close to the kids, right? Now, I didn't know Pre that. Pretense. That was, yes, pretense. Pretense, keyword. Yes. Yeah. So I went back to school. I graduated uh, um, summa cum laude. Congratulations. Right? Thank you. I've, I've graduated summa cum laude. I've, I finished actually three degrees during that time. I finished two associates and a bachelor's in that time, right? And he, he had gotten really close to the kids. And I guess he thought that that was enough leverage for us to get back together. Oh my and God, you wanted to reconcile at that point? Yeah, so, so I was kind of, I didn't know this though. I didn't know this. And he wanted to come to my graduation. And I said, I'm sorry, you can't. He says, why not? I said, this graduation is for my family and you're not my family. Good for you. Oh, Good for you. Twist the oh knife while you got it in there. Why don't you? I'm proud oh, of you. Good right? for you. And Enforcing so boundaries. You know, I, I went to my, I went to the graduation because I've always believed that my kids need their father, right? Mm -hmm. They need them. They need that image, but you know, it also has to change, right? Because depending on the situation, everything depends on, on the situation. So, you know, I finished my bachelor's. We went, we went to IHOP because that's a tradition for us to go to IHOP. That's what the kids want to do. Anytime we do something special, we go to IHOP. I don't know what, when it became a tradition, but that's what we did. So we go through the graduation and he calls me in the middle of dinner, you know, and the kids and I are eating pancakes and bacon and you know, <laughs> you know, doing all this stuff for, you know, for celebration. But to us, that's fun. Right. So he calls me and I step away and he says, well, I want the kids tomorrow. I said, well, you don't get the kids tomorrow. It's my weekend. Well, I want them tomorrow. I said, I'm sorry. You're not getting them. He said, well, I think you think you're all bad in that because you graduated with your bachelor's. He says, oh, not like you're gonna... God. He says, not like you're going to do anything else with it. I said, okay. So I went back and got a double master's <laughs> simultaneously. <laughs> I really love that he just tells you right up front the kind of person that he is. I know right. people, if you're listening to this right now and you're hearing what she's saying, those lines that he's using can make you feel guilty and can make a lot of people crumble and go back. Yeah. He's just telling you who he is. Go ahead and keep on walking, ladies. Please, dear God. Yes. Well, and, and then the other thing, too, it wasn't so much that he said those words is that Okay, so I made it a rule not to say things to the kids, right? And I'm becoming to me, I guess I had hoped that he wouldn't defame me, right, to the kids. So I would tell the kids, I would actually get onto them if they disrespected him or spoke ill of him, right? And I wouldn't allow it. But then the kids started realizing that I was, I was the only one doing it. And so I ended up going back to school. I went and got back and got my master's. I have a master's in science and a master's in education and getting ready to finish, you know, my PhD. I've got a little bit more to do. And then during this whole process, it was like, let me turn that knife a little bit more. But the kids were just amazing during the whole process because I ended up getting the presidential ring, right? I got, I, I, Dr. Ferrier, who's the president of AM, actually awarded it to me. And I was laughing because the kids went with me to, during the ceremony, and their provost marshal is uh, speaking to, to Christopher, which is my eldest. And he says, Christopher, you must be really proud of your, your mother. And he goes, Sir, Dr. Snow, he says, I have mixed feelings about that. And I'm listening to him and he goes, you do? He says, well, yes. He says, now think about this. My mother is carrying, say 12 to 14 hours, works 60 hours a week, has six kids, 
and she graduated summa cum laude. He says, I'm going to be going to college and graduating. He says, I don't have kids. I don't have to work. My mother's flipping the bill for everything. I really don't have any excuses, do I? Ooh. And I went, holy shit. I didn't realize that, right? I mean, I how mean, dare I, you I, set I, the bar so it. high, Juanita? Yep. How dare you? Yep. <laughs> right? Yeah. It just, it just never occurred to me. That was not, that was not my intent. Mm -hmm. My intent was to model that you could do anything in spite of what people were telling you. Everything mm -hmm. is absolutely positive, right? It, it's possible. There's so many possibilities. And I was just, I was taken by the fact that that's what my son saw. And his, I didn't realize that that was one of the reasons he set a goal to be top 1% when he graduated. You know, he chased it and he kept chasing, he kept chasing it. And I didn't realize that was his motivating factor, right? Well, I get a call one day from his principal and he says, Mr. Sepulveda? And I said, yes, Mr. Black. He says, I have your son here. I said, Christopher's there? She goes, yes, I need to, I, you need to speak to him. And I'm thinking, oh, shit, everything's down the drain. You know, what did he fucking do? And I'm thinking, this is, this is my model title, right? Straight A student, athlete. You know, he's gone to regionals as a hurdler. He's, he's varsity. He's this. He's well-mannered, community volunteer, everything, right? So I get on the phone, and he's crying. And I'm going, holy shit, something else happened. He knocks someone up and I'm going, no, this can't be it. My kid doesn't do that. So, you know, I'm thinking all sorts of stuff. And in that split second, he says, mom, I did it. I said, what did you do, me, home? He says, I did it. I'm graduating top 1%. Oh, that's so amazing. It. But you set the exam example, you led by example. And he knew that you did it with, with all these obstacles in your yeah. way. And so for him, he was like, oh my God, my mother did it with six kids. My mother did it with, you know, a, an ex-husband that oh. wasn't supportive, right? Homeless yeah. on top of it, right? And yeah. I have zero excuses for not at least aiming really high, you know, because the best thing he could do was, to show the impact you made in his life. But it gets even better though, because, you know, Olivia graduated national honors president, varsity all four years. I think she graduated top 7%. Hannah did the same thing. She was in national honors. All of them were all national honors. You know, she graduated, I think top 6%. They've all gone on to college. Um, Ethan right now, which is, you know, he was my baby boy. He uh, he's he's at AM now. And, you know, he says, I'm going to be a doctor. And I'm going, you go ahead. Mm -hmm. I'll pay. I'll pay for it. I'll figure it out. You know, Ruthie, the same thing. They're all, you know, gifted and talented. Same thing with Maggie. Very athletics. They all play instruments. They're not the perfect kids, even though I praise them. But I stopped worrying about the fact that we were homeless. I stopped worrying about the fact of what we didn't have. And I was grateful for what we did. Mm -hmm. I stopped focusing on everything we could have done. And I started focusing on what we were doing and what we were accomplishing. And we removed all the no's and we removed all you can'ts and we removed, you know, because you're indigent or whatever the case may be. And, and, you know, I laugh about this because I remember sitting and I know some of y'all have done this. So I'm going to say it out loud. I, re I, I remember sitting at a plasma center donating plasma so I could afford a suit for my son. Oh, wow. Because his dad wouldn't buy him one. So I donated plasma so I could afford a brand new suit for my son. And I remember doing it repeatedly, even though I would get little jobs and, and I would get ahead and then we'd fall back, get ahead and fall back. I remember doing all these odds. I, we would go mow yards together, all of us with trash bags and everything, just so we could afford shoes. 
uh, we went to pantries, food pantries. Oh my gosh, I think that was my favorite one is, so we went to this one food pantry and everybody got their food and they all got in the vehicle. And I looked at him, I said, get out. He says, but mom, we got our food. I said, yes, we did. But now you're gonna help carry all those bags for everybody else. You are not getting free food without earning it. We are going to carry out everybody's bag. He says, well, we don't have to. They say you don't have to, but I say you have to. You're gonna earn this. We're not getting it for free. So that's what we would do. If we had to go to food pantries, I would make the kids carry everybody else's groceries, you know, after we got ours. I, I didn't want them to take it for granted that it was free. No, it needs to cost you something. And also gratitude. Yes. Right. It's, it's their way of giving back. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I love that. I, I love that lesson. I mean, I, I think all too often now we live in a generation where, you know, they feel entitled that, no, I deserve yeah. all this stuff. And no, okay, I don't no. have to help anybody else. I only have to help myself. And you've, you've missed that connection. We, we are human beings, you know, yeah. intrinsically, we, we have to connect, you know, and that's the reason why even with mothers and babies, that, that connection and that bond and, and, you know, and why nature makes it so that the babies look more like the dads in the beginning so that they have that bond, right? <laughs> like, oh yeah, I'm yours. So you better love me, right? <laughs> <laughs> there's there's a reason we got to give you something right right we'll throw you a bone every so often <laughs> oh, i feel like how we got there is because we threw you a bone yeah but it was a little one it was a little I, one. I, I don't i don't know anything about your sex life juanita <laughs> <laughs> i can't comment on that well i do have seven children so that should tell you something yeah <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> I love it. You know, we got we got Ira with eight kids. We've got Juanita with seven. Oh, yeah. 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 And I physically gave birth to all of them. Sure did. Holy yeah. cow. And and that's why that's why I'm so passionate about what I'm doing now is because programs, and I'll mind you, I love the VA, I love our military. But programs are not set up to be favorable towards the woman veteran and their children. And again, it's, they're, they're working on it. They've made good progress, but they're not keeping up with the growing numbers. I mean, right now, there's over 55,000 women veterans that are homeless with children. And they're only counting them as single. They're not even tracking, you know, their children. So, wow. Yeah. It's incredible. Well, at least yeah, they have somebody in their corner that's going to fight like a motherfucker. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I do. I advocate. I don't think there's one day that goes by without me speaking about, you know, homeless women veterans or homeless women, you know, to that point. Uh, just there's a program here that I've been helping with. You know, we go out and get furniture and we get it for free. Um, there's another pantry that we're able to go pick up groceries for veterans, men and women, um, clothing. And I, I laugh because I tell them, I said, you know, I guess I have a tattoo on my forehead that says cara de pobre, uh, a poor, you know, poor, poor person's face, right? And just give it to me, I'll take it, right? And I've got a photo where I'm literally loading up a refrigerator on the back of my, my you know, ridge line and toting this refrigerator over to a veteran's house or a washer to a veteran's house, or we make several trips and I, you know, you've seen those photos with the mattresses on top of the vans, right? And I feel like oh, man, <laughs> I'm at least gonna put straps and bungees, right? And hanging onto it for dear life, yes. Right, hanging on to that's it. Funny. But you know, sometimes that's all you can do. And, you know, I, I look at some of my sisters in arms you know, and I, I tell people, you know, you've got to, you've got to be aware, you know, these, these women, not that I'm not saying my brothers in arms aren't either, but these women, you know, are not given enough credit 
Um, some of them are Purple Hearts, Combat Bees. I mean, Travis, you, you've met some of these women, talented officers, talented enlisted, senior enlisted. You've got some serious badass, you know, privates and PFCs that were really willing to lay their lives down and the programs are just not staying, you know, moving fast enough to keep up with their needs. So, and, and again, I don't feel like we're entitled. We just need a hand up, you know, and that goes right back to what you said, Travis. You know, silence is not strength. Accepting the help, saying that you need help, that's powerful. Yeah. That's, that's, that's true strength right there. Well, what I think I um, love about Travis the most, he's the first one to step up and talk about, um, you know, women. And goddamn, you know, he even said in one podcast, he goes, God, you guys are smarter than men. And he's, he's the first one to admit it and he totally gets it. But, you know, I, I think for some guys, um, sit, being able to say that takes a li- like chips off a little bit of them, you know? And I, I think it takes a strong man to be able to say something like that. They, I would say the majority of guys would consider that um, uh, emasculating, right? To say something like that, I but it's I don't not- get it. I don't get it. It's not to do I know with you don't. it has nothing to do with them. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Like I don't I don't know. I don't I I I kills me. I, I have no idea how people can't think that everyone on this earth is amazing. It doesn't matter what sex you are, it doesn't matter what you look like, it doesn't matter where you're from. Like, how do you not see the strength and the beauty in everybody? People are like racism. I'm like, what on earth is that? How is that even a thing? Oh, sexism. How on have you met women? They're phenomenal like how is it oh what about the, the have you seen what they're able to do like what on earth makes one group better than another and how on earth is yeah. most of the news dominated with this shit i mean seriously have you met juanita have you met <laughs> right. Carol? Oh. yeah i don't get it and, and i and i appreciate that and that's the other thing too is edifying each other because sometimes you know Sometimes people forget to look at themselves, right? And that's one of the things I used to tell people, I wish you could see yourself through my eyes. Mm. If you could see yourself through my eyes, you would see that I consider you powerful, wise, amazing, talented, you know, a go-getter, successful, you know, loving and kind, and yet empowering you to others, right? Being able to scale through life, and what I mean when I say scale through life, it's like, it's those peaks and valleys that you go through, not just physically, financially, but also emotionally, right? And what you said was correct, Travis. It, it It doesn't have anything to do with your race. It doesn't have anything to do with your sexuality. It's the person, the essence of the person. I think that so many people overlook and that's one of the reasons i love my business partner i love roger torres he is he's one of those amazing people that if you give the time to really see the person that they are they're amazing i couldn't think of a better business partner to have and a better best friend to have and i tell people all the time he is my best friend he's 71 And, you know, we've been at this for four years. We've known each other a little bit over four years, but we've been at, you know, our company just pushing and pushing, creating, creating. And the movements that we've had, the change, the total, you know, evolution of our, of our system has been phenomenal, but we complement each other. We, and we constantly remind each other. And I tell him, I said, oh my gosh, you're freaking brilliant. How the heck did I end up with you? And he says, well, that's funny because that's how I think of you. And I'm going, really? Do tell. And he says, what are you? I'll give you 20 minutes to knock that off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, uh, but I mean, he's, you know, he's been my best friend, honestly. And I thought I was going to lose him, you know, a, a little bit over a year ago because he had a heart attack. Oof. And yeah, it was, it was scary. 
um, I was ready to fly out there. And he goes, don't you dare stay right where you are. I'm fine. And I'm going, but you just had a heart attack. I'm fine. There's plenty of people here. You have things to do. I'm going, okay, then mm. it's fine. I'm staying right here. But if you have another one, I'm going to be there. He goes, fine. If I have another one, <laughs> like you can predict that one. Right. But I mean, but we're constantly, the other thing too is we are constantly reading, giving back, and really looking at the future, not just for us, but what we're going to leave behind. Because we know we're not going to take it. I know I have an expiration date, but I am certainly going to try my damnedest to be able to touch as many lives as possible and hopefully touch them in a moment, in a way that they know that there's hope. There's hope. You want that to be your legacy. You know, I do. I, I know I'm not going to take it with me. I, there's just, unless my, you know, my coffin's made out of, you know, a thousand dollar bills. I mean, that'll be something else, but just kidding. But the reality is I don't want to take it. I want to create as much as possible and create change. Money comes and goes, but change that's impactful. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to leave change where someone else can see themselves through my eyes and know that they, they matter, they have value, and they are, they're those agents of change that are going to do something else for someone else. I want that domino effect that we start something good and it ends something good. There's going to be those in-betweens, but it doesn't matter. At the end, you're going to know that someone was there for you and you were valued. I love that message. I mean, the rest of it is just feeling. I mean, everything we've gone through, you know, I, I have to constantly update my, my bio and I, I was frantically trying to put it all together. Right. And I'm going, Oh, did I do that? Oh, I forgot I did that. Oh my and God. So we much- just talked about that with Reggie. Isn't that funny? Oh my gosh. It's, we just, it's so we just funny. talked about that. You're like, you're reading the thing. You're like, is that me? Wow, that's not amazing. I had no idea. <laughs> well, no. And, and then here's the other thing, too, is, um, you know, I, I just got into the George Bush's leadership program for veterans. And, you know, when you make certain programs, you know, you get excited because you get into these programs. Right. And I didn't realize that I hadn't updated my LinkedIn or my or my Facebook or any of those public you know, sites. Right. And so I had to frantically update. And then my friend's calling, said, oh, you forgot this. I'm going, oh, shit, let me fix this again. He says, oh, no, you forgot this too. And I'm going, damn it. And so I had to go back to all of my other ones. And I pulled up, you know, my old resume. So I'm going, damn, when did I do that? Oh, and I did that too? Damn. Okay. And so it ended up being three pages. I I said, well, I can't put all that crap on there. Let me chop it off here. And then I get a call from um, Dr. Cooper, who's over at A&M. I actually sit on Anum's Foundation Board of Directors. And she goes, Oh, we're recommending you for the Hope Award. And I'm going, What the heck is that? But you know, it's supposed to be something, you know, innovative or legacy or something. And I'm thinking, she goes, Can you send me your updated resume? And I'm going, damn it. Fix this yeah. <laughs> and she goes, she goes, and I want to know everything you've done. And I'm going, Are you for real? I said, Thank God I just worked on this. But you're putting these things together and you're going, I did this? I didn't do that. No, really? And I had to go back. I said, yeah, that's my picture. That's, I did that. And the kids go, mom, how can you forget that? It's easy because you're not focusing on yourself. You're focusing on, on that mission. You're focusing on yeah. the people that you're helping. And you have to reminding them that this isn't it. They didn't fail. They just found a way it didn't work. And I'm going through all these things and I'm being, you know, recognized and I'm being reminded and I'm told to submit and I'm doing this and I'm going, hmm, I guess I have done a few things, you know, because I always thought, honestly, I was going to retire from the Marine Corps. I was a pre-med student at A&M that I couldn't afford medical school. Everybody gets excited, but nobody tells you how to pay for it. I found the Marine Corps. It became one of the love of my lives. You know, I had to I had to choose between my family and the military. No brainer, I chose my family. 
I don't regret it. I miss it, but I don't regret it. Went on to get my degrees. I mean, I have six freaking degrees. I have certifications. I have training. I have all sorts of stuff, right? You know, we have three companies. We do nonprofits. I have seven amazing kids. I'm healthy. I have so many wonderful acquaintances and good friends, right? Mm -hmm. They haven't graduated to friends yet, but I have one best friend that I can literally tell all my secrets to and know that he loves me unconditionally. Oh, absolutely. That's just absolutely wonderful. If you're out here listening to this and you think uh, Juanita's doing a fantastic job, let her know. Find her on social <laughs> media. Share this thing. Say, wow. Tag her on it. Let her know how amazing you are. If you are struggling to fill out your resume and you're not working <laughs> on yourself as a person and you're not helping other people, you're missing out. Because if you're working hard on you and you're working hard on helping others, just yeah. like Juanita, you'll have endless things to write down on your resume. Mm -hmm. Well, one last thing that I never thought I would do, and Travis, you know, I thought this was a joke. When I got recommended to compete for Miss Veteran America, I thought, are you joking? I'm a Marine. I'm not going into this beauty pageant. And sorry, whoever hears me from Miss Veteran America, I'm only giving an example. It's a competition. It really is. It's a competition. I sat on that application for two months because I refused to do it. I didn't want to do it. And then they call me. Why says, didn't you want to do it? Well, because I thought it was a beauty contest. You know, you have to be nope. all of this, and the perfect figure and everything. And they said, hmm, you didn't read the mission. I said, nope, I didn't. I'm not reading no beauty contest mission. They probably all dolled up and everything. You know, really Don says, you need to go read the mission. Well, Lord and behold, their mission is, to support women, homeless women veterans and their children, to eliminate homeless women veterans and their children. Wow. And I thought, don't I feel stupid? <laughs> and, with, and then within 24 hours, I applied. So the next thought was, eh, it's not like I'm going to make it. Sunday morning, congratulations, you have been accepted into the uh, 2022 Miss Veteran America. So I even had to have my kids read this. Is this a joke? He says, no, mom, that's legit. You made it. <laughs> oh so my God. Is, <laughs> you know, and I'm thinking, seriously, I am 53 years old. What the heck am I going to be doing this thing, right? And so I went and I'm thinking, oh, no big deal. I'm going to get eliminated, you know, the first round. Oh my God, so you keep the, knocking yourself down before you even, you know, apply before you even get there. It's like, what are you doing? Well, it, well, see, because I'm thinking, okay, I got to work on, on annual investments, options trading, because that's really more important. So I got to do this. And then that other side says, yeah, but you know, you're supposed to be that little angel says, wake up. You know, you're supposed to be helping women veteran because you know what it's like. This is important. Right. And so I go through it and I do the, um, I ain't your mama by you know Jennifer Lopez, that part where she jumps in heels. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm gonna jump, I'm gonna wipe out, I'm out, right? Hell no, I land that freaking landing and I keep on and then they ask me questions and I'm going, okay, well, maybe I do like this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and and I'm I'm looking at the video and the photos that they take of me and I'm going, okay, I don't look too bad. Okay, you're looking kind of good there. Okay, I can do this. <laughs> you know? And then all these ladies that are there, we're talking to each other, right? And and as we're having these conversations, it comes out that we're all walking the same parallel journey. Oh, a look lot at of that. the things, yeah, a lot of the things that I experience, of course. You know, some of them were just homeless. Some of them were assaulted. Some mm. of them, you know, had drinking problems or drugs or, you know, different things, right? None of them, none of this group had drugs, but, you know, drinking and things of that nature. Um, different, you know, different things, PTSD. And you're going, you know, you're having to really do this self-evaluation. I'm going, huh, well, aren't I selfish? 
I really didn't think about this. I really did not think about it. And the more that I got to know these ladies, the more conversations I had with them, the more I read, I realized I had a lot in common with them. Not only am I stunning, but, <laughs> but the fact that a lot of these women are really badass. PhDs, attorneys, um, other entrepreneurs, their VSOs, they're still active duty. I mean, a lot of amazing women. Mm -hmm. And you find a tribe that you really didn't realize you were missing. And it's very fulfilling. I mean, I contact them, you know, even now we message, you know, hey, what dress did you get? Well, I don't know. As long as my ass doesn't hang out, I'm good. And I'm <laughs> 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 you know, but, but, you know, we've been in each other's acts. We go out and we performed in their things and we're giving each other support. And we talk about, yes, this looks good on you. No, don't wear that. You know, I can't wait to see who wins. The other thing too is the reality is I really don't care if I win. I really don't. I have found a group of women that are not only intelligent, but they're vulnerable and they allow themselves to be vulnerable enough to be friends. And that is powerful. That's very powerful. And I love the mission. Even yeah. after all this is done, I'm still going to invest my time in them because the numbers are growing and the systems are not keeping up with the need. We're not tracking these women. We're not making sure that their children are okay. You know, their children are being taken from them. They're being incarcerated. There's no programs that are set up for them to be able to support. And again, this is not a pity. We're not asking for pity. We're asking for a hand up. There's a huge difference, huge difference. And none of these women, I haven't come across one single woman that doesn't show gratitude or appreciation I haven't had one single woman not say, thank you. Thank you, sister. Thank you for remembering me. And thank you for coming back for me. Because I will never forget that we leave no man and no woman behind. We can't. They sign that blank check without hesitation. And I am grateful for that. But I'm not going to leave them. Less even now, knowing that there's a program that actually puts a roof over their heads and reminds them that they belong, they're important, their children are important, and they, they have an important role ahead of them. They don't know it yet, but they do. So. Yeah, well, don't you think life is just a culmination of experiences and experiences that you share with others? So like I said, jolt, you know, mm -hmm. nonsense knowledge. <laughs> so. mm -hmm. Yep. nonsense knowledge and it just comes all together it's perfect puzzle with all this stuff that you don't even realize belongs together and it does it gives you a perfect image of what's for you you know and sometimes it changes it changes I mean heck how did I know I was gonna bump into Travis again you know I'm just saying yeah <laughs> He kind of yeah, kind of like story. invades everybody's personal space. So eventually what? you're gonna bump into him. What? You're like Dang, setting this like some kind of like uh some kind of creep or someone to watch out for. <laughs> you try I'm not saying that possibly. I'm not saying that. Sorry. <laughs> he just invades your personal space. He gonna be there. Because at least it's like getting up and close in person. <laughs> no. Well, no, we got, it's, to, it's we got to have dinner in uh, in San Antonio a couple months ago. We did reconnect, catch up, see what other badass yeah. ladies in San Antonio were doing. I invited like I invited like ten people, and I had four amazing ladies showed up. All the guys bailed on me. All the dudes canceled, and then we take the picture, and like my wife's best friend is like, "What is he out doing in San Antonio right now? Like, who are all these women?" And I was like, "All the guys oh, bailed. Like, that's their problem. I can't I can't help it if they don't show up." She's yep. like, oh, that's just people he knows. It's no big deal. <laughs> well, we're dependable. We're dependable, you know, and we literally will change things around, you know, for you to be able to count on us. Not my fault. Just another that I know reason I that uh, women are better right there. Ooh, nice. 
Yeah, I mean, sometimes things are beyond our control, but you know, when somebody invites you, you know, to just catch up, have a conversation, that doesn't take a whole lot. That's just a, a little bit of investment, a little bit of investment, because you don't know. That's the other thing too is if someone invites you out, think about where you are, you know, and maybe you need it just as much as that other person who's inviting you out. Because yeah. I know I run 90 miles an hour and I sometimes forget to have fun. I have to be reminded. Absolutely. Hey, Juani, as we're wrapping it up here, where can people connect with you and what advice would you have to anyone that's listening that's maybe going through something right now? Well, um, I've got my email address that, you know, you're welcome to put out. It's um, my professional email is J-U-A-N-I-T-A dot S-E-P-U-L-B-E-D-A at Vanyal Victory Alpha November Yankee Echo Lima Investments with an S dot com. And then you could always email me at my personal which is Juliet Foxtrot Sierra, which is my last name, Sierra Echo Papa Uniform Victor Echo Delta Alpha number four at G mail, Gmail, or just give me a call. Um, you know, if I don't answer, I will, you know, leave me a message. Please leave me a message. 210 uh, 569 4095. You can contact me. The other thing too is, you know, you can never have enough soundboards, honestly. And what I mean by soundboards is, you know, everybody laughs because I, everybody asks me, have you ever met a stranger? Well, probably not. That's probably why I get in trouble so much. Yeah. <laughs> but, but the reality is, it, it's so difficult for you not to smile at someone when someone smiles back at you, right? Or when you hear a child's you know, laughter, you can't help but feel joy. I really believe that you need to bring joy to someone else. You gotta, even if you're having one of those rough days, you gotta claim that it's gonna be a great day. You gotta claim it because sometimes that's the only thing you can hang on to. A deal may fall through, you know, your dog may die, you know, the electricity gets turned off or you run out of gas or the car, you know, breaks down or whatever. The reality is, Find a kitchen cabinet. And what I mean by a kitchen cabinet is always have, you know, an odd number sitting with you because there's always going to be a tiebreaker, right? Find those people that you can sit at the kitchen, have those crucial conversations, those authentic conversations, that 3 a.m. friends that are really going to be there for you. And I know you've got them. You've just forgotten to reach out to them or something has happened that you've forgotten to reach out. You know, step out of yourself, go past your pride and call them because they're probably thinking of you too. And don't hang on to things that really have no value. That's in the past. It, it, it has no value. You wanna chat? I mean, <laughs> David called me, you know, David Carter calls me and he goes, we spoke like four hours. We literally talked about everything. Sometimes you just gotta talk it out. It could be nonsense, but talk it out. But the reality is never stop learning. Pick up a book, turn off that stinking boob tube, stop listening to all sorts of news, take the time to read, read The Alchemist, read The Midnight Library, read, you know, Crucial Conversations, read, you know, Life's Golden Ticket, read, 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 because your comprehension is so important. Growing your vocabulary is another, because if you can't comprehend, you're going to miss something. And don't be so concerned with, you know, coming up with a question when you're in the middle of a conversation. Be an active listener, because you want the same thing. Be an active listener and be present. Don't be on your stinking phones. Don't be on the computer. Be present, because you're going to miss, you're going to miss that moment that you can't get back. I don't want to miss them. That's the reason I got out of the Marine Corps. You know, I loved it, but my children's first steps, all those are important. 
you got to figure out what's what's important for you, your priorities. It's not time management, it's your priorities. I will literally drop anything for my kids. I have walked out of jobs. But the bottom line is read, set your priorities, manifest it and stick to your plan because you're going to get interruptions, but you've got to stick to it if you're going to achieve it. You've got to be able to write it down, put pen to paper. Because if you don't, you don't speak about it into existence, you don't write it into existence, you don't read into existence, it's not going to happen. Cracks me up when people say, oh my gosh, you're so lucky. You're right. The harder I work, the luckier I get. <laughs> but I, I invest a lot of reading. I read an average between 15, 12 to 15 books a year. And I read and I write and I put things down that are, are important to me and I spend time and I find out what my kids are doing daily. I'm present in my life. That's all I got. That's all you got. That's it. Cut it. Cut tape. We're done. Thank you so We're much. Not the mic. Thank you so much. I'm trying to. It's like stuck up in this thing. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for being our guest today. We really appreciate you stopping by. I know that Carol could speak for herself. So I'll let her talk. Oh, I, I'm talking now. Okay. Um, Travis, Travis usually dominates. So he he'll he'll just take over talking. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. He's like, he's really the best. He's I, I consider him the, one of my best counterparts. I love you. Anyways, oh, um, <laughs> <laughs> he likes to dominate. He's everywhere. He's behind you right now. Well, I know. And, and, right. and he's no, just trying to be ultra intimidating. And yeah, yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. So okay. Thank you everyone for joining us here today as we continue to grow, get to know sex, successful entrepreneurs and what makes them who they are, the, the adversities they've overcome and allow us to reveal what truly motivates them. Thank you so much. That's all for this episode of Titan Evolution Podcast. We hope this no-holds-barred conversation opened your eyes on what it takes to live a genuinely happy life according to your own terms. Now that you've treated yourself to such a refreshing discussion, you cannot listen to nonsense content anymore. Be sure not to miss an episode by subscribing to the show at titanevolutionpodcast.com. Don't forget to share the word so more people can be enlightened, informed, and entertained. Thank you for listening.